Christianity Explained by an Atheist Did Jesus Marriage End on the Rocks? Hi, I'm your host, Raz Pasha. In a previous episode, we looked at the evidence supporting the claim that Jesus was married to Mary Magdalene. In this episode, we will find that the royal marriage ended on the rocks. We'll look at the grounds for the annulment of Jesus' marriage. We will focus on 1 Corinthians chapter 7. Sometimes much more information can be extracted from a text than may have been intended by the author. This is one such case. Most of what is happening is bubbling away just below the surface interpretation. For each line of text I will give an explanatory, either a comment or pasha. Pasha being the Hebrew word for interpretation usually applied to scripture. 1 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 1 states now concerning the things whereof ye wrote unto me it is good for a man not to touch a woman patia here we can tell that the corinthian church had previously written a letter to paul with some concerns we will see from the following that the early church was dealing with a scandal concerning a highly ranked christian who had had a divorce from their wife the common designation for the early Christians had been the Ebionites. Ebionites lived a monastic life. By saying that it is good for a man not to touch a woman, Paul is saying that it is good to become an Ebionite. 1 Corinthians 7.2 Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife, and let every woman have her own husband. Pesha, the monasticism of the Ebonites was important to the early church, but here Paul is saying that it's all right to marry. Paul himself had married whilst he was in Corinth. Note that the justification was to avoid fornication and not produce offspring. That was because they thought that the end of days was at hand. Jesus had said that the end of day, days would come before that generation had passed away. 1 Corinthians 7.3 Let the husband render unto the wife due benevolence, and likewise also the wife unto the husband. Comment. This is just a standard motherhood and apple pie type of statement. 1 Corinthians 7.4 The wife hath not power of her own body, but the husband, and likewise also the husband hath not power of his own body, but the wife. Comment. This almost sounds reasonable, until we consider what they're really talking about. Rape is no longer considered acceptable in marriage today. 1 Corinthians 7.5 Defraud ye not one the other, except it be with consent for a time, that ye may give yourself to fasting and prayer, and come together again, that Satan tempt you not for your incontinency. Pesha, whilst most of the Ebionites were monastic, certain Ebionite leaders were dynastic, in that they only married for the purpose of maintaining their bloodline. The rest of the time, the dynast would live as a monk in the Ebionite community. 1 Corinthians 7.6 But I speak this by permission, and not of commandment. Pesha this verse really throws open the meaning of this chapter. We need to ask the following questions. 1. Why would the Corinthians think that Paul was commanded to respond? 2. Who could be in a position within the Christian group to command Paul? And 3. Why would Paul seek permission? It seems obvious that Paul would need to seek permission from the person at the centre of the controversy. For Paul to be commanded, it would have to be a more senior Christian. It could be Peter, but Peter wasn't truly more highly ranked than Paul. So that leaves Jesus himself. But wasn't Jesus dead? Well, 2nd century Christian Irenaeus wrote that Jesus lived to old age, at least into his 50s. He said that all the church elders from Asia had attested to this. 1 Corinthians 7.7-7.9 For I would that all men were even as I myself, but every man hath his proper gift of God, one after this manner, 
another after that. I say, therefore, to the unmarried and widows, it is good for them if they abide even as I. But if they cannot contain, let them marry, for it is better to marry than burn, than to burn. Comment. It would seem that at the time this letter was written, Paul was not married. He is still espousing the virtues of celibacy associated with the Ebionite community. Here we see the basis for the concept of a fiery hell within Christianity. Originally, Judaism was without an afterlife or hell. Many think that the hell concept was introduced during the period of Persian occupation 500 years before. It's always interesting to watch the way religions evolve. In some ways, they mirror the evolution of species in the natural world. 1 Corinthians 7, 10 and 11 And unto the married I command, not I, but the Lord, let not the wife depart from a husband, but if she depart, let her remain unmarried, or be reconciled to a husband, and let not the husband put away his wife. Patia, Paul is quoting Jesus on the matter of divorce, as is evident by saying, Not I, but the Lord. Now Paul had only spoken briefly to Jesus in vision on the road to Damascus. Clearly, if Saul was being converted to Christianity, they were not discussing the Christian doctrine of marriage and divorce. So the question we should be asking is, how did Saul know what Jesus thought or didn't think about divorce? I'd conclude that Jesus did not die and ascend to heaven, but lived to old age as stated by all the church elders in Asia. As such, Paul was able to consult Jesus, the leader of the Christians, on a regular basis. However, the question from the Corinthians involved Jesus' own divorce, it would not be appropriate for Jesus to appear to be making up the rules for his own divorce. 1 Corinthians 7.12 But to the rest speak I, not the Lord. If any brother hath a wife that believeth not, and she be pleased to dwell with him, let him not put her away. Patia Paul is now giving his take on the rules of divorce. He is doing this of his own volition, otherwise his words would not help Jesus in this scandal. In 44 CE, the twelve apostles split into a group that followed Simon and a group that followed Jesus. Mary Magdalene went with Simon's group, effectively leaving Jesus. Mary was now cons considered a Magian by the Christians. You recall that there had been a traditional closeness between the Magians and the Ebionites. It was the Magians that had bore gifts for the infant Jesus. But now the alliance was broken, and, the, and Mary, as a Magian, was considered an unbeliever by the Christians. 1 Corinthians 7.13-15 And the woman which has a husband that believeth not, and if he be pleased to dwell with her, let her not leave him. For the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife, and the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband. Else were your children unclean, but now are they holy? But if the unbelieving depart, let him depart. A brother or a sister is not under bondage in such cases. But God hath called us to peace. Patia. These are the grounds for the divorce of Jesus. Conclusion Jesus' marriage to Mary Magdalene was annulled on the basis that she dumped Jesus and she was not a believing Christian. The divorce adds to the evidence that Jesus was married. The annulment allowed Jesus to remarry. His new wife was Lydia whose heart he opened, as stated in Acts 16.14. Lydia became a seller of purple purple being an expensive dye and the colour of the cloth worn by Davidic kings. Jesus' divorce to Mary explains why Pope Gregory made the outburst labelling Mary Magdalene a sinner and adulteress. The divorce also explains why the references in the Gospels to Jesus' marriage are not more explicit. The early Christians were highly embarrassed.